Hey guys, I'm Ann Clay, and today we are going into Judy Condon's condo. Now this is very exciting. For those of you who don't know who Judy Condon is, well, I like to call her the Queen of Prim because she has published more than 50 books on how to decorate country and prim. She's clever and talented and she's a do-it-yourselfer and I know you're gonna get a lot out of visiting her condo. Judy recently moved from a 300-year-old primitive home into this bright, airy condo and she was forced to try to decide what exactly she was gonna take and what she was gonna pass on to other people. Now that's not the easiest task and I know that a lot of you are in that process now. What Judy decided to do was go with a real eclectic style in her condo. So let's take a look and let's learn the tips that she has for us. Today is part one. In a few days we'll be going into her kitchen and we're gonna be learning more about her business. If you wanna know more about Judy's books or products, I'm putting the website in the description box below. For now, enjoy the tour. Hi, how are you? Hi, Anne? hi, Welcome. Judy. Thank how nice you. To see you. Please come in. Thank you. What a treat! Oh, it's so exciting to be here. Oh, I'm glad. Oh, this is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I like uh, I like a mix. I like to put maybe what might be considered an industrial lighting piece with an old. 250 year old painted piece. The fact that I have light walls allows me now to see the original paint. Yes. Whereas in my previous house, which was almost 300 years old, <laughs> the paint was lost. Right. Against the walls. Right. But so I really you, enjoy. you have now gone into a condo from an old home. You have a I reputation have. for fixing up old homes, right? I love it. Yes. <laughs> And now you've traded it all in for what kind of life is this? The good life. It is a wonderful <laughs> life for a lot of reasons. And uh, I ended up redoing this entire condo also because there were very outdated uh, bathrooms. The kitchen was very outdated mm -hmm. and had a tile floor which was cracked and broken and uh, dark flooring. So it was fun even to take a newer piece and turn it into something that would showcase my antiques. Wow. That was my purpose. Wow. Yes. So it's been fun. Oh, this is so exciting. Well, why don't you lead us through your home okay. and let's talk about what's going on. Great. My pleasure. Well, I think you'll notice that one of my favorite early painted colors is blue. <laughs> and uh, I'm drawn to it. I think it, I find it very soothing. And uh, each piece I could tell a story where I found it, who I was with, uh, and I got thinking, I think those of us who enjoy country and enjoy collecting antiques gravitate toward the history. We're always interested in the purpose that something served. Right. For example, this piece, which was a gift from my husband, we know at one point served as a winder. But the more I thought about how we enjoy history, I got thinking, in a sense, we are creating history ourselves because we are not only saving the pieces that we found, but the memories that we have for each piece that we now own creates a history of our lives and where we were, what we did. So we're kind of, I think, replicating history in our own way. Right. So I, I do enjoy history. Um, in this particular instance, I like the eclectic mix. Uh, many of the pieces, for example, this piece was bright, shiny, high, I call it highway caution orange Ooh. when I found it and it was in a shop up in Maine and I very discreetly went to the side with my fingernail chipped away at it when the owner wasn't looking and discovered blue paint underneath so I said well, I'll take that and with a scraper about this wide I meticulously dry scraped every piece until I got down to the original blue. Wow. And it's one of my 
my favorites. Oh. Um, this table, uh, the table I had when I moved here wasn't wasn't the right size, so I built it. I went to Home Depot and played the little old lady and said, I don't really like to use a bandsaw, so would you cut me some wood? <laughs> and he did. <laughs> and I just logistically thought, well, I need a base and I need supports. And so I just took the pine boards and I had old nails and I put it together in the basement and said, okay, that's just what I need. I think it cost me probably, I don't know, $60 maybe for the whole thing. Wow. Um, so I like to do things that uh, I can be creative with, that I can make, and uh, not just to save money, but because of the pride of kind of doing something for the house. Right. I, Did you put a finish on there? I just, pol I, I stained it. I, I love early American stain. That's the color mm -hmm. I choose. Uh -huh. I stained it. I put a thin coat of polyurethane. I use square nails mm -hmm. to nail into my supports that I have going across from the base. Right. Um, it was not, it was not hard to do. Oh. And, uh, uh, it goes with the Windsor chairs. Yes. It fits here. Yes. Uh, I wanted it wide enough so that this industrial, like they call this wagon wheel, yes. didn't overpower the table. Mm -hmm. But I think the black mm -hmm. ties together. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I think it's a good example. Uh, early uh, ironstone is not something that necessarily would be from the same period as Windsor chairs or some of these early painted pieces yet again I like what the white does with the natural wood it kind of makes it pop mm -hmm. um, it's very nice very nice and I love that piece that's a beautiful it is, piece and it's nice again from a uh, antique dealer who was called into a home by someone who couldn't pay their doctor bill and asked if there was anything he'd like to purchase. And he bought this and called me and said, I have a piece I think you would like. And then I did. <laughs> so I uh, purchased that probably, oh, I'm gonna guess 30, 35 years ago from him. Wow. Never, I've always enjoyed it. It comes everywhere with you, Oh, huh? yes it does, yes it does. <laughs> oh man, how did you know what to go through when you were downsizing to a condo from a home? I measured every space. I knew the pieces, and there were two or three that I was not able to fit in. And uh, I, I thought it's okay, because what I had left, there were a lot of smalls. And I think with the smalls, I had many more pantry boxes mm -hmm. than I needed, and I and dough bowls. And I got to the point where I realized, wait a minute, I'm, I don't even get to see them because they're hidden somewhere, and here they are, such a waste of beautiful painted pieces. And so I offered them to different people who I knew would enjoy them. I couldn't see them anyway, and I had more than I needed. So it was, it was a hard decision, but I have to say, as we walk through, you'll see, I have managed to put, I think, a lot in this space, but I feel as though I've left it uh, open enough that it's not crowded and I can enjoy each for the space that it takes up right uh, without kind of feeling as though it's so full I can't move right so right and I think COVID played a part in some of our change of thinking because I feel as though people looked when we were shut into our homes and who knew what was going to happen I think some of us felt we wanted to simplify. We needed, it was a good lesson in how we might make our lives easier and simpler mm -hmm. than the way we were living. Right. And I think it's had a profound effect on maybe even two or three years later, what we do, how we decorate, how we think, um, and simplifying added calm mm -hmm. to an otherwise very, scary and yeah. traumatic experience yes life yes for many so i, I think agree. that was one reason people you know such as myself thought 
this is the time to make it simpler and right. easier and calm. Right. <laughs> yeah. You've done such a good job yes. of it. Well, thank you. Oh, wow. Thank you. And you have a fireplace that passes through to the other room. I do. So what I did do. you have done to this fireplace? It was uh, red brick. Okay. I had it painted. There's a, uh, a paint that Home Depot sells. It's called Bills, B-I-L-Z. And it's a very, it's a primer actually but it's intended for fireplaces. Hmm. It's very watery and it's sticky. You have to go uh -huh. fast. Yeah. And it will adhere to the holes that you don't see when you haven't painted your fireplace. Uh -huh. And it's not, it's not cheap. I think it's about $75 a gallon, but it does enable you to paint a fireplace and cover it without that wow. showing through. But again, I wanted the openness. Um, these uh, pineapples that I pour, these are cordless tree lights, which I sell in boxes of 10. And actually someone on Facebook who purchases a lot of my pieces came up with the idea to pull the stem out of the pineapple and take one of the tree lights and put it in and make a pineapple candle holder. Wow. Rather than just the pineapple. So yeah. I thought that was very clever. <laughs> I loved it when she did it. I said, I'm going to go make some too. So, <laughs> <laughs> so again, sometimes some of these ideas come from people who, you know, I've met on Facebook or who follow me. Right. Right. Very clever. How about that basket? I don't, you know, I put it there because I didn't know where to put it when I moved in and it hasn't moved. I don't, it's an old strainer. I don't know, I, uh, it's obviously not in mint condition, but mm -hmm. that's okay. I like the wood, again, mm -hmm. I, I like to mix textures. You'll see, and you'll see, for example, a soft texture with artificial lavender, or here, artificial lavender with a hard texture and I think it's balance and uh, I like the combination of mixing soft, hard, light, dark mm -hmm. and I th we can talk a little bit about how I think a room uh, it should be decorated so it feels comfortable because I think it has to do with balance. Yes. Um, yes. But, you know, we can talk about we'll talk that, about that. But these, yeah. I'd like to just mention these. Okay. And there's more in the living room. These were made by a, a woman who has since passed away, Sybil Leary. She was from Canada, and she would go out and find pieces of driftwood. Mm -hmm. And she would create paper mache pieces from around the driftwood and create these pieces. And I saw her somewhere, and she lived in New Hampshire. This was years and years ago. And I said, may I come to your house? I'd like to buy one of your pieces. And she said, by all means. I drove probably four hours to her house to buy what I thought was one piece, and I walked in and I bought everything she had. <laughs> because in the living room here, these are all her pieces. And what oh. she does is she takes her driftwood and she builds from the piece of driftwood. She would build with paper mache all these pieces. Oh my goodness. And they're all signed, um, but again, I, they're more contemporary, but I love the unique uh, feature of her pieces, uh, the creativity. Yes. Um, just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Wow. They have their own personality. They do. Yeah. Beautiful. Creation, the, she was French, oh. Sibillary. So I have a number of her pieces, and uh, again, it's a different texture. Yes. It's a soft texture. Yeah. <gasps> Those are beautiful. Aren't they? Yes. I, I, I do enjoy them. Yes. They look so beautiful against the white brick. I think so, too. Mm -hmm. And then I found this at a, uh, a, a shop down in outside of New Haven, and I loved, again, 
the old looking wood with the tin, mm -hmm. but the gray just seemed to pull the mm -hmm. colors from these pieces mm -hmm. together. Yeah. Wow. Beautiful. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> I bought that, um, I don't know how many years ago. I It was supposed to hang on the wall, and I was afraid. It, it has hooks, but I've never hung it because I was afraid it was too heavy. Uh -huh. So I put boards underneath. I cut an old board, and it's sort of resting <laughs> on those boards. Wow. Uh, and again, I... Mm -hmm. I love the blue, mm -hmm. and mm. it's beautiful. It just was the perfect space for it. Yes, yes, and with that perfect little cabinet space. above, really cute. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Covered. Yeah. These blue pieces, you know, this was an old bin, a uh, wash tub bin. Mm -hmm. I just put a winnowing board on top to make it into a table. Love this it. is a funny story. Okay. Um. <laughs> My son and I were shopping all over Maine for a uh, uh, for antiques, and uh, we stopped at his friend's house on the way. I wanted to use her restroom, and I went in to use her restroom, and she had a bookcase in the bathroom, and there was this box filled with rollers and bobby pins and things. <laughs> and I looked at this box, and I came out and said to her, Sue, where, where did you find this? And she said, oh, I don't know. I've had it for years. I don't know where I got it. Why do you want it? I said, well, no, I won't take it, but I will buy it from you. She said, oh, no, 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 just take it. Well, I couldn't bring myself to just take it because she had no idea of the value of that wood box. So I paid her a fair price, but... Like I said, we are collecting history, and every piece has a story, and yes. I still sometimes see it filled with old, you know, plastic curling rollers. Or she curled her hair with and bobby pins. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I oh, enjoy that's it. neat. <laughs> wow. Wow. And this, okay, so your living room is has a very definite eclectic mix yes. going on here. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that hanging is interior design, I think, but again, I liked the unique, the black. Mm -hmm. um, Ikea furniture, which is very, very easy and comfortable. Uh -huh. um, this is a rug I hooked from an Edith O'Neill pattern. Uh, she's from Texas. I can't remember the name. I want to say red, something red is the name of her company. I can't remember. Okay. Um, but again, yes, it is definitely eclectic. Uh, these little silhouettes I purchased in Pennsylvania. They're not old, but it's a family, and they are all signed pieces. I think her name was um, Robertson, I want to think. I don't know whether, yes. Hollow cut silhouette. Hmm. Ellen Robertson. Hmm. Oh, 05. Cute. And again, here was a piece, of, an old chair. I didn't want to have to give it away, so I found a spot for it. So I've got an Ikea couch and an old chair with silhouettes next to a, but I think it's it adds interest and again, texture, and um, it's, it's okay to mix. Yes. It's okay to mix things. Yes. And you're right, it does make the older pieces stand out. It does, yes. Yes. Like another another blue covered here, right under your TV. Yes. That's great. Mm -hmm. I have a wonderful babbling brook out back that I, when I open the bedroom windows at night, I can hear it babbling and uh, it's open, it's bright. I have a lot of red cardinals and hawks. Uh, we have a bear <laughs> and it comes by occasionally. Um, it's just very country. It's quiet. Um, it's I can't hear the brook, and it's just... It's beautiful. Yeah. It's absolutely beautiful. Oh, I love your tree. Yes, it's just a silly tree, and I bought it. That is an old stand I found in New Hampshire, an old butter churn stand. And, 
Wow. Just stuck it in the corner. There's <laughs> one of the cardinals now. They fly sitting right here on the tree. Oh yeah, there he is. Quite a few of them. Beautiful. Um, this is kind of a, a she humors an old lady. She has a cigarette out of sticking out of her mouth. It's just kind of. <laughs> this was from a shop in another town nearby, New Preston, called River Song. Mm. And uh, yes, I just like the look of it. The prim it's really primitive, but I love the heart base. Mm -hmm. um, it just. I don't know. I was just drawn to it. So your tip to everyone is buy what you're drawn to. Yes. 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 If it feels right. Right. Uh, you know, I think decorating comes with feeling. And I, I say that because I think it not only has to feel comfortable to you, but I look at a room and to my thinking, I picture it on a scale. And the, the room has to be balanced. You can't have all of your heavy furniture on one side of the room and your lighter pieces on the other because it's not going to it's not going to be balanced. Right. And if you walk into a room and you have dark pieces and light pieces mm -hmm. and you have grouped your dark pieces in one corner, mm -hmm. that's your eye is going to go there because it pulls you there. You need to balance again the light and the dark. Mm -hmm. Not only with the heavy but the the colors, I think. And I think once you do that, then it it feels right. You will know that you've hit that when you do it. And it was funny because a friend of mine said to me uh, just recently, she said, I remember the first book you wrote when you were talking about decorating and people asked you, well, where do you begin? How do you start? And you said to them, start in one corner. Hmm. Begin in one corner, set that corner up, and then move out from there into the rest of the room. And mm -hmm. then step back and see if you've balanced light, dark, heavy, and you'll know when it feels right. And I've been in the position where I've looked at a room and I've said, it's not right. The bed is too dark or the bed is too light or the blue doesn't go with that. And it, if it doesn't feel right, mm -hmm. Doesn't feel right. No. It's not going to be right. No, um, it's never. It's not going to be happy with That's it. That's right. So. Then you have to start again. <laughs> yes. Yes. Wow. So which way should we head, Judy? Well, which way would you, you want like to head to go? into we have, the we guest have, suite? Uh, uh, my and office. Sure. Uh, in here. Uh, I love it. And again, it's very homey. This is. Uh, tin lined. It's a salesman sample dry sink. Wow. I bought that at, in Seville, Ohio. When I was out filming houses, I, I found this and I can't pass up blue. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this piece was a wheelbarrow, side of a wheelbarrow, and it is actually, I call it the story of us, meaning my husband and me. Oh. Because the first house up here, right here, mm -hmm. has a um, has an orange tree next to it. I grew up in Orange, Connecticut. Okay. My husband grew up in Cherry Creek. And so next to it, there's a house with a cherry tree. And we married and I had a shop here in town. Um, this was our house that we purchased in Litchfield. My husband worked for a bearing company, so it's hard to see the bearings in the old-fashioned cart. Okay. And we had a wonderful little cat that we found here Aww. in our house in Virginia. Hmm. This was my family's summer house in Maine. Um, this is a vacation house we had, we owned on an island. This was my Marsh Homestead shop at the general store. This was the stone church we were married in. And then I moved this shop to the Red Barn, and this was our 1760 house in Douglas, Mass. Oh, we moved here. Aww. And a artist friend painted this for us. And I just I cherish it because it's the story <laughs> of us. It's where we started, and you know, that's so great. Oh, we yeah. yeah, very special. Aww. That very is special. That is. Mm -hmm. 
I think everyone needs a story of us panel. I think so too. <laughs> yeah. And of course, it's on blue paint. Of course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that makes it perfect. Yes. <laughs> um, this piece I purchased years ago from that same man in Maine. It was white, shiny, thick porch paint. Mm -hmm. It said perfect for my shop. I brought it home. I did take a heat gun and it bubbles like scrambled eggs. <laughs> And it just, I heat gone as fast as I could heat it, it bubbled. I don't think it took me more than a couple of days. And I said, not going to the shop, it's going to my dining room. <laughs> <laughs> so it didn't make it anywhere but here. I never, never got to the never shop. Never got there. No. That's a beautiful piece. Yeah. Yeah, and what a great way to hide all your office supplies. Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> yes. yes, it's wonderful. <laughs> wow. Um, this I purchased. It was top of a step cupboard, and I just like the shape. This was hooked to me by my very good friend in town. Uh, so it's a special piece. Shape. Uh, my great-great-grandfather built a Christmas tree stand that was water-powered with a wheel. The huh. water came out and traveled down the brook through a farmyard underneath the picket fence into a pond. And these were some of the sheep. It was built in about 1875. I have a picture of it. It's since, unfortunately, I've restored it, but I gave it to my niece. Yeah. But I kept some of the sheep wow. that go back to the oh, ones he neat. had in that farmyard. Oh. oh. It's a beautiful piece, too. It is. I love mustard. It was, yeah. And again, a unique shape. Yes. Yes. Love the chairs. Always yes. love the make-do chairs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's funny, people don't think those are comfortable, but I no, love them. No. no, they are definitely comfortable. <laughs> they are. <laughs> the piece my printer on, if I took the lid off, it's all uh, rippled on the inside. It's an old wash tub. Oh, wow. In, in early red paint. Oh, beautiful. Um, Beautiful. So I just had to find a spot for it. And I love how your office looks right over the window. It does. It's beautiful it does. view of the cul de sac. I have a little bird that sits oh. on the little railing out here in the oh. mornings. Yes. That's great. Yes, it's very quiet. Do you here. sit here and write? Is this where you sit I and do. write? I do. I sit and write here. Uh huh. Wow. This is the guest bath. Okay. And again, I mix. I have a, a somewhat contemporary vanity, but here's an old black trunk that I made into a mm, shelf. Good idea. Uh, stores towels. Um, again, texture. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a wonderful piece my mom made in 1972. Gave it to me as a Christmas gift. Oh. Cruel, early cruel piece. That's sweet. Nice. Thank you. So and again, cute. I kind of mixed uh, something that is a stone sculpture, believe it or not. I found that in Maine, um, but I've mixed it, tried to mix a little bit brighter, lighter room. And this old bed, is this an old bed or an old no, it's an, repro? It, it's like, it's a repro, mm -hmm. yeah. And again, I painted, this was one, I think I painted it four different colors before I <laughs> so that I didn't know quite what it, what I wanted in here, and mm -hmm. I did. I finally came up with okay, that's good now. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes it's trial and error, right? And I always, I always say to myself before I do something, yeah. Two questions: What's the worst thing that can happen? Mm -hmm. And what's it going to cost me to fix this if I really mess up? Good question. <laughs> so anytime with paint, all it's going to cost me is another bucket of paint. Right. That's nothing. And right. my time. And your which time. Which is okay. Yeah. So those yeah. two questions. Yes. How bad can I mess this up and what's it going to cost me to fix it if I do? <laughs> and I kind of go by that golden rule. Yeah, that's that's a good kind of rule. Because <laughs> you really strike me as someone who's never been afraid to try. That's true. Yeah. I and I have gotten yeah. into trouble sometimes. <laughs> I, you know, I, I will admit to that. <laughs> um, I guess. Well, I would call it the master bedroom, but I've been corrected, and I'm told that I think we don't call it that any longer. I think we call it the primary. Okay. Bedroom. Let's go to the primary. This is the primary bedroom. Okay. And uh, again, I've mixed old and new. Um, Light and dark. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, this is an old chest. It dates actually to the 1700s. Uh, we can date a piece not only by square nails, but when things have snipe hinges, it takes it back into the 1600s, early 1700s. And wow. this is an old chest that I've had for years and years. Wow. Um, this is one of Sybil Weary's pieces. <laughs> oh. uh, my husband played the trombone, and I said, I'd love to have a trombone player. <laughs> so she created that for me. <laughs> and again, driftwood wings, wonderful wings. That's great. <laughs> and the bed? Bed is, yeah, it's a, uh, I had this uh, frame made in Pennsylvania, and it's uh, just you know, a new bed, mm -hmm. and uh, I like the black with the gray, and just mm -hmm. a simple frame. Again, mm -hmm. a little bit of contrast, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a little old and new. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, very nice. And the, uh, the bathroom here, uh, I redid the bathrooms. They needed all the flooring. There were cracked tiles. I replaced the vanities. And I added my cupboards because I wasn't going to get rid of them. I was going to find every space to put my cupboards. Um, I love that. So, yeah, I enjoy That's one of uh, uh, Lana's little. Yes, it is. Figures. Yeah. Aww. This was a crate. I bought it in a shop. These were the sides of the crate. Mm -hmm. And the paint was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I bought the crate, ripped it apart, and built a cupboard so that I could use the sides as the doors. And I remember doing it in the kitchen. And my husband said, Judy, we can go buy you a cupboard. You don't have to be struggling to make this. I said, oh no, you don't understand. This, <laughs> this is the paint. This is the color. So, but he was perfectly willing. We'll find you a cupboard. He saw me sawing and hammering. And <laughs> I do too. Oh, I love the blue. I don't know what it is about the blue. It is. It's. I think it's calming. Yeah. And I love it with. It can go with red. It goes with mustard. Mm -hmm. It's a nice compliment. To, yeah. To other colors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're not done, are we? <laughs> no. I have a wonderful. I don't know what to call it. It's like a guest quarters. Mm -hmm. But what it really is is a space that holds my horse and my brain bin that I couldn't part with. And wow. obviously, it's very roomy. Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> but it's wonderful when we have guests who come. They can have the hole downstairs. I have a full bath, a slider that goes outdoors. Um, it gives me a great place for pictures and uh, displaying the family, which is fun. Yes. Uh, my keyboard. So it's a, it's kind of a catch-all room. A pretty catch-all room. But yes, it is. And this horse does need a display. Oh, I mean, it does, doesn't it? This is amazing. Yes, yes. I love wow. this horse. There's something, uh, and again, uh, it might make it back upstairs sometime, but <laughs> I loved how it looked on, on the uh, early grain bin, too. Oh, yes. So... Is there a story about the horse or the grain bin? Well, the, grain, the horse belonged to a good friend of mine from Virginia, and uh, she brought it up to sell, and I said, mm -mm, no, <laughs> I'm going to buy that. <laughs> so I did, and this, I wanted, a, I think I found that at a shop in uh, Massachusetts, but look at the board. One board. Wow. One single board. One single board on top. And of course, that's that's where you can determine your age. You know the sides too. One one board sides. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. So it's, yes, it is a very. It, it's pretty, yeah. and I. It's a perfect wall for it because it I is. can come down and enjoy the horse. And, yeah, and play yeah. the piano. Yeah. The keyboard. Yes. Beautiful. Thank you. And just so much room. I, I yes, just... it is. It, it is. And they have a full bath, so, yeah. you know, I can 
say, well, come on up for breakfast when you want it, you know. <laughs> they can sleep in. Yeah. This is very nice. Yes, yes. It's, it's, it's the perfect place to put your people.